the seat taken. Okay, so what we're gonna do today is we've got ourselves an old 90 me out of here and uh, it's got a really ratty soft top on it. Um, the main problem with this soft top, well, it's all chewed up, but it's got the uh, no back window. <laughs> so when it rains, it gets wet. So what we've got is we have a uh, replacement top that's a used one, but it's on a frame. So we're gonna show you how to take the whole assembly, including the frame, off and uh, and then put a new frame in. And that way you, you can just swap out if you've got a whole unit. So we're gonna show you what's involved in that. And uh, we're gonna attack it real quick and see how long it takes us. Let's get the seats forward. So we take this cap, it's a Phillips screw. There's one here. It comes right out of there. Uh, next, we want to take our 10 millimeter off. Important to have something to put all the bits and pieces into as well. That makes a big difference. Yeah. Remove this clip here. And this little tiny one here. Like that. Then we pull this back like that. And we want to loosen off a couple of these here on the uh, sill protector. Pull this out. So we're going to pull that right out. The next thing we want to do is we want to pop. If you've got one of these or something similar, this will make your life a lot easier because you just slide that right underneath there and these things come out easy peasy. So, the other thing, like that. And then we should be able to, except for the speaker that's in the way. You know what? Somebody's grafted these speakers in here and they're going to need to come out in order for us to do our thing. So We're going to have to pull these out because this is going to stop us from taking this panel off and to get proper access to the bolts that hold the frame on, it's easier if this isn't on here. So I'll be right back with the speaker. So now we've got the speaker out of the way. And we can take this trim panel out, like that. Now what we've got this out, if you have a hard top from the factory, there's a little, you can see that, that outline, that oval. Uh, cars that came with a hard top from day one, that was punched out from the factory. If you ever want to add the side latches to a car that you're putting a hardtop on, you can take these panels off and dremel these holes out. But you want to make sure you stay inside this line, otherwise you may see a gap. So that's what, that's, that's what that is on the back. That's to show them where to punch it so you can put the side latches on for the hardtop. So we've removed our second old 6x9 speaker. So we'll under these, these 10 mil bolts here. This Phillips screw here. And then we'll take our handy clip from actually one more thing we'll take out before we forget is this little plug here you want to try to get it underneath pull the little middle part out and then that comes out no problem just like that and we'll pop this guy up be careful not to break it because they can be quite brittle after sitting in the sun for 27 years That's loose. Now we want to remove the clips. We're going to end up pulling this whole piece of carpet out. So we're just going to go along right now and just pull all of these out. There's one already missing there. There we go. That way you don't break any of these off. It's nice to have them intact.
little clip that holds that together. And we also want to loosen off these two screws here. You don't have to take them all the way out, just loosen them off so that you can pull the end of this, this thing up a little bit. Like that. It allows you to get that out of there. And then you can, you can remove this guy. Just like that. And there's a little a little post that goes in to the metal here and there's also a couple of clips. If this has ever been off, the clips may be broken off so that may not be an issue for you, but um, so there's two clips and then this guy that you have and this guy that you have to line up when you put them back on. So that's that. And then on the other side of this, this is the whole reason why we took these off, is in here you have a total of three on each side, uh, 12 millimeter bolts. That's what holds the frame to the car. That's where the pivot point is. So um, we're going to leave those on for now until we undo everything else. We've got a, a series of about a dozen 10 mil uh, retainer bolts or retainer nuts that hold it on around the backside. You'll see in a minute when we start pulling it apart. Then after we've undone everything else, we undo these and then we can lift the whole top assembly out of the car. So we got ourselves a large Phillips here. There's the there's a little stopper in here. When the soft top is down, there's a plastic uh, piece that rests on top of that. So you want to try and pull these off before you start taking this carpet out. There it is. And there's one on the other side also. It's a lot easier without a back window. <laughs> a lot of the installers, when they're replacing an old soft top like this, they'll actually cut the whole back panel out because it gives them easy access to, uh, to get everything out and it speeds the job up for them. But if you're trying to remove a decent soft top to graft onto another car, of course you don't want to be tearing it up. So now we've got that out. We can, there's another clip in the center here that we want to pull out, right there. And there's usually a couple more, but I think this car has been apart a few times, so they're not there anymore. So we've got all those. And the next order of business is to undo all of these ones. So it's missing, mm -hmm. yeah, most of these have been ripped out already. We'll out. Yeah, somebody's somebody's lost most of them already. Which speeds us up on the deinstallation, but we're gonna have to find some to put it back together with to make it nice when we're done. Okay, so we're gonna remove the carpet. And then what we have to do is take uh, all of these 10 millimeter nuts off. Then we can remove these bows at the back. And you'll want a deep extension for this one. Rather than the little guy, you'll want the long one. Always good to have a little bucket or something to put, these, to put these into right away because they roll off and then they go down anywhere they possibly can. Sometimes never, never to be seen again if they go in certain places. So we've got all but two of our little 10 millimeter nuts off. Now there are two more that are all the way in here. There's one, one on each side that we've got left, so if you go in there.
Yeah. It's a good idea to take your watch off before you start this job too. <laughs> Just as I'm reaching my hand into places where there's sharp metal. Um, definitely a good idea. Now, that's off, these will come out. Good idea while you've got these off, sand them down and spray them with rust paint. Make them look good. You don't have to spray the backside so much, but you definitely want to spray this top part and this face on them. That way they'll look really good. Best to round these all up while you can still find them. Because they will go missing. Yeah, that's all the ones we took out. We'll probably find a few of the original ones when we start taking things apart. Okay. So, remove our tools, work clean. So now that we've got that undone, I'll show you this part here. That's the rain rail. The, the soft top goes into the rain rail and that funnels all the water that goes down the side of the top out the bottom here and into these cups. Those drain cups at the bottom here. I know you'll get a better look at those when we actually remove the soft top frame. But those do get plugged and then they back up and they'll flood the car or they'll put water into the rocker panels. And that's why you see a lot of rocker panels rusted out on these because when both drain systems get plugged that's when you get rust. So we'll show you what to do about that as well. So we want to carefully pull this assembly over these studs. And you want to be gentle how you do this because rain rails are expensive and if you wreck them then you're in trouble. So it's a good idea to be very careful with your rain rail, especially at this stage here because it actually goes underneath this flange flange here and actually this this brittle plastic part feeds up underneath there so be very gentle when pulling this out because it's very easy to damage it okay so we've got our 12 millimeter socket and we're going to remove those three bolts we talked about earlier and those are the ones that actually hold the frame onto the car so we're going to go into these these holes here I'm going to carefully remove those So now that those are out, we can finish removing, carefully removing the rest of the perimeter of the soft top. Now, there's a couple things you want to be careful of here, especially with the rain rail. Let's just carefully take this down here. If you get a car that hasn't been taken apart yet. Just find my tool. There's going to be the end of the rain rail is held in place by one of these little plugs right in this spot here and you wouldn't know it was there unless somebody told you. If you don't remove that you end up tearing the end of the rain rail off. I mean a lot of them if somebody's been in like somebody's been into this one a few times in the over the over the years that one's not there so that one's already out. There you are, and you want to make sure you've got it all out and ready. Then once you've got it to that stage, then you can lift the top out. And if I could get a little bit of help from my friend Mark over here. Mark. 
If you can grab this this bar here, we should be able to lift this right out. Right. So carefully, just a little bit at a time, so we tilt it up a little. Oh, it's still on that last post in there, on my side here. There's a post way in there. That was the last one of those nuts that we undid. And that, it likes to hang up on that one when you're trying to get it out. That's why it's a, it's a two person job at this point. Okay, here's up. Okay, Mark, just keep it at that level or a little bit lower if you can. There we go, got it. back and lay it on its face like that. so there we are that's how you remove a soft top assembly and these are the drains that we talked about so when these get plugged and you can see how much stuff ends up in there you find all kinds of stuff in here because usually uh, people throw things on the rear deck, sunglasses, purses, socks, whatever it is. It always ends up in here when you take a corner. So there's all sorts of debris, all kinds of interesting things end up in there. So while you've got the top off, take a coat hanger, carefully put it through there and clean out all the dirt. Take a vacuum cleaner and suck all the debris out. And that way you know that those are clean before you start putting the old top back in. Okay, so what we're going to show you right now is we're going to show you what the drains look like where the rain rail dumps all the water into. So we've got the top off this one so we can really see what we're looking at. So if you have a look down in here, this is the drain cup. And all the water that runs down the side of the soft top comes out the end of the rain rail and into this cup and then drains out the bottom of the car through a, a rubber tube. These get plugged very often. So what you want to do is you want to, while you Get a coat hanger that looks just like this. Make yourself a little handle on the top so that you can turn it around in there and root it all out. You can just see all the gross stuff in there. This one didn't have any water sitting in it, so the water was still flowing through on this one, but there's still a lot of dirt in there. So what you want to do is do a really good job of, uh, of rooting that out. You can actually see it at the bottom of the car. So I'm going to grab my light and I'll show you where it comes out underneath. And there it is there. You can see all the stuff on the ground that's coming out of there. Yeah, do it, do it a whole bunch of times because initially the first few passes, not much comes out because there's a little flap on the bottom of the pipe and that holds everything in. So you want to make sure that you do a really good job. And, uh, and that's how you unplug the drains for the soft top. Yeah. We're doing the other side of the drains on this Miata. Um, if you have a look in the cup, you can see all of the stuff that's collected in there. This is all, you know, bits of, you know, pine needles and other stuff that's gotten in there. All the stuff from the trees. So what we'll do, we're going to vacuum this out with a shop vac in a minute, but uh, we're going to unplug that. So you take your coat hanger and give it lots of passes through there. You can see it come out the other side, of course. That's it right there. See the coat hanger wiggling around. We'll do a good job on that. And then that way when it rains, when you put the top on, up, the water that drains through the rain rail will have somewhere to go and it won't back up into the car. And if, if these get plugged, it can back up and you can get a lot of mold in the winter time all across the rear deck. So that's how you clean those out.
Good idea while you've got this whole thing apart with the soft top frame out. Get your shop vac out and give it a very good vacuum. You want to vacuum out the drain cup. So right in here. Get all of that debris out of there so that it's not going to end up back in that hole. So, um, depending on your level of OCD, um, while this is apart, you may just want to give it a quick vacuum and walk away and say, you know what, it's an old car, let's just put it back together. Or you may just want to dust it all over, just like we're going to do here real quick. Um, or you may want to do what we did to my friend's car, is wash the entire thing, wax it, armor all, everything in sight. Well, we don't really use armor all, but we use something similar. And, uh, and then make it look like brand new. Um, but for our purposes today, I think what we're going to do is going to give it a light dust over. We'll vacuum it one more time. Make sure it looks nice, because you've got all this stuff here. And uh, I know it'll look even better when we're all done. It doesn't take that long unless you really start to get OCD, which can happen and may happen yet before we're done. Okay, while we've got this thing apart and we're starting to become a little more OCD on the cleaning part of it, um, these areas here you actually see when the soft top frame's in the car, when the top's down. So, as you can tell, there's a lot of spider webs and junk, and it's not that easy to clean in there. So what you want to do is take a wet rag, give it a good clean up while you can get at it nice and easy. And you'll be a lot happier after you put it back together when you look in there and it looks like brand new again. So we're just going to do that real quick. And then after it's dry, I like to take some protectant like Mother's Armor All 303, and uh, then we'll actually treat that and it'll be super shiny when we're done. So I'll just give it a quick run over here and then I'll show you the end result in a few minutes after this dries. Another thing while you've got it all apart, what you want to have a look at is all of the massive amounts of lint that collect around the seat belt motor. You can see all of that stuff. So while you've got your shop back out and you're cleaning all the rest of the rear deck here, you want to get in there and start pulling some of this stuff out with the vacuum cleaner. It may add a little bit of life to your, uh, to your seat belts and not having all that extra stuff in there. As you can tell, there's, there's quite a bit. And this is just the stuff you can see. There's quite a bit down inside that bag usually as well. So you want to give it a good vacuum in there and, uh, and clean it up while you're inside. <laughs> So now that we've got um, this back area cleaned up quite a bit, um, what we're going to do is we're going to take some protectant. I like this stuff, it's nice, it smells good too. So we're just going to put some of that on here just to make it look really good. We've cleaned it now, uh, it's just this helps to clean it a bit more and also to give it that sheen and that luster so that when you look in, you'll see a nice shiny new looking, you know, black part in the car, which, you know, some people don't care, to me, it makes a difference. I like. I like stuff clean, and especially when you go to all that trouble, it's nice to have something that looks a lot better than it did when you started. So we're just going to clean up in there a little bit. I'm going to put some on this drain cup as well, just so the water and the dirt that, that uh, get in there, it'll run off a lot easier as well with this stuff on. So it'll help it to pass through there a lot quicker and it'll stay a bit cleaner as well. in there to all the places that you can't get to as easily when the top is on the car just want to get in there make it look real good and then it'll make you a lot happier when you're all finished the job if you take a look at the other side in comparison uh, you'll see why this is a, a good thing to do Okay, so the OCD kicked in, <laughs> so we decided to clean um, this all up, make it look nice. It only took about 15 minutes, and you know it's a thousand percent better than it was when we started. So um, I'm going to quit while I'm ahead because I want to get this top on, but uh, it's well worth the time and effort 
to clean it up and know what's in there and that way you feel better about it and if you're OCD it'll stop you from wanting to pull it apart again afterwards. So there you are. Okay, so we've got our, our used replacement top here that's been hanging around for a while. Um, we've checked it out, the rain rail's in really good shape. It's been sitting around a little while, so it's got a little bit of stuff in it. But uh, overall the top's in a much better shape than the one that was on the car. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean this up a little bit and then we're going to place it in the car and then we're going to reverse all the steps we took to take the old one off. What you want to do here, pick it up please Mark, there you go. Um, we want to look at the orientation of, of these here. Right now the top, although we've got it upright, is actually according to the frame is in the down position. So what we want to do is carefully lay this in here, carefully feed the rain rail in, and that's how it should go in like that. So what we've got to do is find a way to pull this back part out. Mark, if we lift it up for a sec. Basically leave this, wait, leave that up there for now. Okay. We'll try to take the curve out of the back window here. Yes, I spend a lot of time looking at that. I still have the towel. So, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to try to carefully feed this in. This is a delicate process because you don't want to tear anything up, but it doesn't go in all that naturally either. It's going to fight you a little bit. So, hold on. So, this is pinched, so we've got to try to get this into the right position. Here we go. So, now that we've got it to this stage, what we want to try to do here is line this up. This hook here corresponds with this bolt here. When the top's in the down position, it should be in there and resting on it. So what we want to do is see if we can get that to go down and line up enough. And if we can, then we can put the three bolts back in. Once those bolts are in and they're in properly, then we can put the top up and we can start to reattach all the rear part of the top and get the bows back on. And this, this process can take a little while to get it to the point where, where it wants to be. Sometimes, it's, sometimes you have to actually put the top up in order to get things to move into the position that you want them to be in. Um, so you can hold that right there. Thank you. You've got to kind of... See, that's down right now. That's kicked down. But what we'll do is if we can get one side done, then we can, we can work on it. We're going to reinsert uh, the three 12 millimeter bolts and what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of never seize on them so that they thread up nice so we don't cross thread them. It's a very easy to cross thread these ones because of the angle that you're at and the way the soft top um, can go in a different direction on you. So try and thread them up by hand first. So 
take our 12 millimeter socket. And I just want to snug them up a little bit, just so that they're, you know, all the way in, but not tight. Because we may need uh, a little bit of wiggle room uh, in order to get the other side latched up. So. Okay, so now that we've got the one side all bolted up, you can see the bolts there now. We're going to try to get this side to cooperate. Um, this side isn't cooperating as of yet, so... Okay, I finally got this into the right position here now. So that's in this position, it's right. Actually, if you can hold that right where it is. In this position, it's the I'll be able to line the bolts up with the three holes. But you have to fight with it sometimes. It just doesn't move the way you want it to. So you, you move it around until it finally gets into the right position, and that's when you can get a get a good friend to hold it for you. And then you can thread these in. There we go. I'm just going to get the other two threaded and then we'll tighten them down. This is an important step because if you don't do this right, then you run the risk of cross threading these bolts and then they don't hold tight anymore and you can snap them off as well. So. And they should thread up easily. If you're not, if they're not threading easily, then they're not. Uh, you're not lined up properly. There you go. Voila. So now we have all of those all sorted out and in the right position, and now we can move on to the next step. So now that we've got those lined up, the bolts are in, now the, the frame itself is attached to the car. So we'll go back afterwards and we'll recheck and tighten those bolts before we put it all back together. So the next order of business is to have the top up and then what you want to do is all of these studs need to correspond with the holes in the rain rail and the top. So you want to carefully go around and get the top to onto those studs and you may need to have it up sort of halfway like that in order to give yourself the room you, you pretty much got to go in the car get a friend to hold the top up for you and then you can push these on to the studs like that okay. you've got them all on all the way around then you can put the top you know not all the way up but most of the way up and then you can put those uh, the bars on that we took off uh, if you have the time you know sand them down and paint them with some black rust paint and then look really nice when you put it back together and then you reattach uh, about I think it's a series of 12 of those 10 millimeter bolts put your interior back together and then you've got your top and you're all finished